the next, the next treat is a skit, uh, which uh, is largely Laurel's brainchild, but she scoured all of us, she racked our brains, and then she even went into some X-rated family stories, which the children will act now. <laughs> The year is 1959, and Ralph, a young redneck from Edmonton in the Wild West, has made his way up to darkest Ontario to study veterinary medicine in the <laughs> Ralph had been enrolled in agriculture when Dr. Alex Raftery, a friend of his father, suggested that since Ralph was so good with animals, he should consider a cat. And Dr. Raftery would call the dean to see if he could get an in. The next thing Ralph knew, he was a vet student in Guelph. Some students he met there are here today. Please stand and wait, Dr. Sigrin McCarthy. Well, I think it was too cold. <laughs> <laughs> Walt Gaspel, you saw well, there, there he is again. And Ralph Christian. And he's not here, it is too cold. But it's only minus 55 or something. <laughs> Everyone was caught up in the giddy atmosphere of Rashmi. It was then and there that a lovely lass from Toronto studying home economics caught Ralph's eye. Even though sophomores made all the frost girls wear paper bags over their heads. <laughs> Later that year, a friend convinced Lois to invite him to a class party, and Ralph accepted. Little did Lois know, even at that tender time, he probably would have accepted a marriage proposal. <laughs> Ralph knew this girl was special. They went for long walks together and talked for hours. She began to share some of her home ec projects with him. The big ones. <laughs> and he still joked around saying the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. The truth is that she had already captured his eye and his heart. He knew before she did that this is it! <laughs> After working together on the young people's executive and lots of practice driving lessons in Ralph's Volkswagen, and even more hours of talking, they were engaged. Lois graduated, and they planned to be married in both that fall, but the church burned down over the summer. <laughs> They wondered if God was trying to tell them something. <laughs> they recklessly charged ahead, and on September the 6th in the year of our Lord, 1963, they were wed in Weston near her family home in Toronto. Ain't she cute? <laughs> Lois worked on campus in crop science, a great experience for a future gardener, while Ralph finished his last year of vet school. Lois kept track of her major earnings, and Ralph quit buying chocolate bars. They're there. You better grab them while they're going. <laughs> even studied. <laughs> studied at his desk a door of cement blocks as Lois nearby gently snored. <laughs> After graduation, Ralph was fortunate to secure a job at the Ledoux Veterinary Hospital working for Dr. Roy Sator. Roy proved to be a great mentor. Lois worked as a dietitian at the University Hospital until she transitioned from dietetics to becoming a true professional home economist 
managing their household and caring for their first baby boy, Daniel Mark, born in August of 1965. Every boy needs a dog and a little sister. <laughs> now it was the dog and sister Laurel Defeat that was born 17 months later in January of 1967. Ralph was working day and night by this time and needed a project. Proof to himself, he really did have some spare time. So his centennial project was born. Building a sailboat. <laughs> The Fireball was launched in 1970 and spent many happy summers at Devil's Lake where we all learned to sail. It now stays up at La Clubiche with Jan, Dan and Jan and their family, where it still enters the winds regattas with kids serving as crew. A good friend turned the school bus into a camper and the growing shoot family decided to do the same thing so they could all go camping together. <laughs> with a fridge, a wood-burning stove, a kitchen table, and beds for everybody. In 1970, this camper made a trip across Canada with kids Dan, age five, and Laurel, three, loving every moment of being able to run around while being on the road. What happened out the back window had better stay in the back of the bus, or those two still might be in line for a lickin'. <laughs> It's about. <laughs> <laughs> right, I wasn't supposed to mention that. In, in Ontario, they went to Uncle John's wedding, visited the relatives, and decided to head for the Maritimes, where they visited many of their dear friends from university days. A visit to the, to, to the vet college. A visit to the vet college in Guelph led to the next chapter of their lives. They were barely home from the trip when the Western College of Veterinary Medicine called to ask Ralph if he'd be willing to study there. So in 1970, Ralph and Lois moved their young family to Saskatoon Road where Ralph, Ralph did a residency in diagnostic pathology. Their faith affirmed in, Je in Jesus was affirmed the faith in Jesus was affirmed and strengthened as they attended a small church there, pastored by Henry Blackaby. After returning to the Duke, Ralph was able to buy the practice from Dr. Sato and worked for many years with Please Stand and Wave if you're Gerald Wallace. There he is. Henry <laughs> Servita. Culture. And let's not forget Keith West. Is Keith West here? No. Oh. No, his wife was uh, ill and he wasn't able to make it and he left her. Okay. Keith was a child on the farm where Ralph did his dad's vet work, but now he's Ralph and Lois's vet. Then there was baby number three, another boy, Ronald David, named after Ralph's late father. Ron was born in 1972. This cheerful, compliant child was a pleasant surprise for Lois and Ralph. As up to now, raising kids had been akin to a juggling firecrack. <laughs> folks had their hands full with the older two. Or maybe he was just a mutant. <laughs> he, he hung out and quietly memorized the National Geographic to practice for the studying would later do in engineering and med school. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Bounding main? That was Clover Lois's question when Ralph brought home a one-day-old foal for Dan's seventh birthday. It was quite the neighborhood attraction. However, when a goat arrived on the scene a few months later as a pet for Laurel, <laughs> The Duke suggested 
suggested they move their zoo to a farm. <laughs> Ralph had been keeping his eye open for a farm close to town. Alan Ronco was the county assessor. And he, oh, is Alan Ronco here? Thank you, Alan. There he is. It's all your fault. <laughs> He alerted Ralph to the fact that a certain farm might be coming up for sale. It took a couple of years to convince the owner of the farm that he could part with it, as he loved the place so much. And after they bought it, the farmer took them around and showed them all of the berry patches and other special spots. Much to the delight of Ralph and the kids, Lois was suddenly married to a farmer. <laughs> Wasn't it Lois Hole who said she would never marry a farmer? But what if the man you married becomes a farmer? What do you do then? Lois didn't wait for an answer. As soon as her boots got muddy, you'd have never known she was born a city girl. Without attention, she performed mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration on a struggling newborn lamb. She milked cows and goats, and made cheese and yogurt with the milk. She, she grew super garden after super garden, and preserved all of the produce. I didn't think she'd been, she, she was born to the life as a fire wife. Ralph just smiled and said he knew all along that she was the one. <laughs> Now, is it me, or do all the grandkids look like they're sporting look alike Ralph does? <laughs> Once Lois and Ralph bought the farm, they needed a house. And they had just built a new vet hospital, and the interest rate was 19%. You remember that? After carefully considering their options, they bought a house in the Duke and moved it out. They also moved out two barns and some other outbuildings. For Laurel, it was the most humiliating day of grade school when she looked out the school window and saw the old sheep shed going on. <laughs> One of her classmates asked quite loudly, Is that your new house? <laughs> The teacher was gracious enough to let the class stand up and watch. <laughs> Meanwhile, the house was going down the highway, not past the school. Having fallen in love with the farming life, Ralph needed more time to enjoy it. He made a plan to retire to ranching ASAP. He sold his veterinary practice in 1980 and was hired by, please stand and wave, Dr. Terry Church, Right here? Either one of them are here. Oh, oh well. I, my hat is off to them. Dr. Terry Church and Dr. Ralph Christian, both of the Alberta government. Ralphie spent 13 years in animal health management and ascended to the lofty position of government meathead. <laughs> in those days include Drs. Bill Stone. Are you here? There we go. Dale Armstrong. And Ray Fenton. Oh, okay, it's too cold. Either or be square. In 1993, Ralph Klein in a Ralph to Ralph communication offered Ralph enough of a deal that he figured it was time to realize his dream of farming full-time, even though he still hadn't made a million dollars which would allow him to farm until it was gone. <laughs> Both Ralph and Lois enjoyed sharing with others their love for nature and golf by hosting various groups on their lakeside property. From school field trips, outings for cubs, girl guides, pioneer girls,